In 2014, 12% of people in the UK identified themselves as either vegan or vegetarian. 20% of them were 16 to 25 year olds. From this, it is clear to see that these lifestyles are very popular, with no signs of slowing down anytime soon. But why is this? How are restaurants and shops catering to this audience? And what exactly defines a vegan and vegetarian lifestyle? I've always been a meat eater, but I'm going to be conducting an experiment. I'll be spending two weeks on a vegan only diet to see just how difficult or easy the transition is. I'm Rachel Lowe's and this is Becoming Vegan. Before I started my vegan diet, I needed to find out exactly what defines a vegan. And to do this, I went to visit Mistral Elmore, a nutritionist, to get all the information I'll need to begin my journey. And what actually is a vegan? So vegan, um, typically, uh, they classify themselves as pure vegetarians. Um, so a vegetarian will still eat um, dairy products and eggs. Um, the vegan removes those and they're very particular about um, things like wearing leather, um, any, um, any foods or processes involved in foods such as food additives. We found that things like a lot of um, cheese and onion crisps, for example, will contain um, meat products products, um, meat extracts, so they'll try and remove those from the diet as well. So anything related to, um, to animals, either production of eggs, production of milk, um, you know, is removed from the diet. And um, what advice would you give to a meat eater or a vegetarian who wanted to become a vegan? Any, any dietary change um, is difficult for our body to, to take on board. Um, we don't like change, you know, the human body doesn't like change. Um, and so to change any diet, even slightly, will have side effects. And I would probably talk to them about, you know, you're likely to experience changes in energy levels, you're likely to um, have problems with your digestion. So either experiences of diarrhea or constipation are quite common when we change a diet. Would you say that being vegan is in any way more healthy than being a meat eater or a vegetarian? There is evidence that because of um, the, the level of control that's required, the level of thought that has to go into a vegan diet, if it's, if it's balanced, if it ticks all those boxes, and they get in the right amount of um, vitamin D, um, riboflavin, vit vitamin B12, considering their iron carefully, then it's thought to have health benefits over other um, diets because there are um, they're likely to be less saturated fats. Um, we know there's a direct link between saturated fat intake and high cholesterol, ultimately links to heart disease. Um, so in terms of heart and cardiovascular health, um, there, are, there are benefits if it's controlled. Using what I had learned from the nutritionist, I felt I was ready to start the experiment. But first, I needed to do some shopping to prepare for my vegan diet. Just looking at the salad dressings, a lot of the oil-based dressings seem to have no milk, eggs or anything in it, so it seems to be suitable for vegans, whereas it's the creamier sauces, like a Caesar dressing, that seem to have the eggy, milky products in. So looking at microwavable products like this, we've got a cheaper version here, which has got milk protein in it, so obviously isn't suitable for a vegan. On the other hand, this vegetarian three bean and chipotle pepper is a more expensive product which seems to be gluten-free, vegan-friendly. So it seems like, at the minute, vegan-friendly foods are a bit more expensive. So, so far I'm actually finding it really hard to find products which are suitable for vegans. Even products like this tomato soup have got things like milk in it. 
So I'm thinking maybe it's a process of perhaps having to make your own things from scratch if you want to know that it's fully vegan. So we've got brands like this Naked Bar which are marketed to be gluten, wheat and dairy free so they are suitable for vegans. Um, there are also other brands it seems like shops like Tesco's have sections aimed at these dietary requirements. So we've come to the frozen section and instantly we found two products which are suitable for vegans. This first one's a free from product which is gluten, wheat and dairy free which means as it says here that it's suitable for vegetarians and vegans and the second one has a nice big stamp saying that it's vegan on it and it's a nice bean burger. After visiting Tesco, I found that it was actually quite difficult to distinguish between products that were vegan and products that were vegetarian or suitable for another diet. Some of the Tesco brand products had a big white V on them, which indicates that they are vegan friendly. However, some of the products had a smaller white V and are only suitable for vegetarians. Meanwhile, other big brands didn't state whether or not they were suitable for vegans. With this confusing packaging and lack of vegan-friendly foods, there must be another way of finding vegan foods rather than visiting the supermarket. When I got home from the supermarket, I decided to get straight to cooking my first vegan meal. I had some vegan pasta sauce and added some peppers, then prepared my vegan pasta. Not having meat in a meal like this is completely new to me, and it will take some getting used to. But for now, this quickly made meal will do, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. So I've just got back to the house and I've decided to make myself something to eat. I've just made a simple pasta, so um, pasta sauce with tomatoes and vegetables with a little bit of seasoning in it. The thing that I'm most interested to try is the vegan pasta, because I'm not sure if it's going to be the same as normal pasta. I've heard that free from pastas are kind of a bit more chewy, let's say. So we'll just see how that goes later on. Okay, so I finished my first day, um, the meal I had today was actually alright, the pasta tasted pretty much the same as normal pasta, um, the only thing I would say is that the, um, the meal wasn't quite as filling as a meat filled meal. Um, as far as shopping vegan goes, I think Supermarkets don't make it that easy. Um, sometimes a product will say suitable for vegetarians when actually it is suitable for vegans as well. Or it will say it's suitable for a vegan and actually it's a product that may contain milk. So it's not, it's not that easy. I think you've got to have your head on and I think if you wanted to do online shopping it would be quite hard. So I think perhaps kind of fresh produce is the way to go for being a vegan rather than trying to go around a supermarket and find products that are that are ready made for you which perhaps is uh, quite a hard challenge if you don't kind of like really believe in vegan ethics. So today has been my first full day, it's been quite an adjustment. Um, for breakfast I had um, the wheat free, dairy free, gluten free muesli I had with soy milk. It was interesting to say the least, it just it sort of tasted like flour. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure that that's an adjustment I could make permanently. Um, for lunch I just had a jacket potato with um, baked beans on it which is something that I normally have anyway so that wasn't that wasn't too bad and dinner was just kind of like a quick stick some chips and 
uh, vegan sausages in the oven so actually on the whole it wasn't that bad I think breakfast was the main thing that sort of threw, threw me off to start with um, hopefully tomorrow's going to be a bit better Having started my vegan journey, I decided to seek out what places besides supermarkets stocked food for people living this lifestyle. I came across a local independent shop run by Linda Wardale, who, as well as running the shop, is also a vegan herself. Why did you decide to set up a shop with such a niche audience? Well, initially, it was a problem when you're doing shopping. Imagine a family of four and um, we're all vegans and I had to go all over Lincoln trying to get the bits and pieces that we needed. And I used to say, why can't one shop stock it all? And then when the opportunity came for me to actually you know, get somewhere that, that did it, I gave up my job, ploughed all my savings into it and took over this place. Do you have a constant flow of customers who are wanting to change their lifestyle? A lot of people are doing, and because there was Veganuary um, this year, and a lot of people have, have switched their diets, um, go, have got literally gone vegan overnight as a result of that. And I think a lot of ce celebrities they've gone vegan, so it's it's in the media, and, and there's the health benefits and animal welfare element to it, which a lot of people are becoming aware of now. And how do you feel you compare to bigger specialists such as Holland and Barrow who cater towards people on these diets? Um, well, they do sell similar things to we do, but um, they tend to major on supplements and that kind of thing. Um, whereas we're more on the whole food and, and health food. And of course, I make cakes on site as well, so that's something that we do a little bit different to the other stores. Can you tell us a little bit about the background of the shop and why you became vegan yourself? Well, I became vegan because of health reasons and obviously animal welfare. Um, and the idea was born because the, there wasn't a proper place where we could get everything that we needed. And then this place, it's been a health food shop. It's always been, well, 30 years it's been a health food shop. And I used to shop here and when the chap retired, I thought, let's give it a go. Uh, what do you feel the general public's reaction is towards a shop such as your own? They love it. <laughs> I mean, we've got something for everybody, you know, you don't have to be vegan to come into the shop, you know, you, we've got locally made produ produce that's suitable for vegans as well. I mean, it's not just what you eat, it's what you wear, you know, the soaps, shampoos, that sort of thing. So, yeah, we've, we've got something for everybody. Do you believe that lifestyles such as the vegan diet are on the rise? Definitely, definitely. And of course, a lot of people have got allergies as well, so that's um, where, you know, egg-free, dairy-free, diets, um, people are going looking for vegan diets and things. Do you believe that chain restaurants are catering enough towards people on a vegan diet? I think they're moving towards it more. Um, I have worked with some of the hotels in, in the area and they do do a vegan option. Obviously you have to tend to ring up and, and book in advance but yeah they are moving towards people with dietary needs. Um, and finally, do you believe that there, is, um, there has been a rise in people picking up these lifestyles or you just not feel that it's had the media attention that it needs? I think it's on the up. I mean, we've been here nearly four years and the people that have changed their diets, um, the, you know, my customers that have changed their diets has, has been quite um, immense. And more and more people are coming from far afield and saying, I've changed my diet, I've gone vegan or vegetarian, you know, meat eaters that have gone vegetarian or even people that are reducing um, their, their meat intake, they're looking for alternatives. After talking with Linda, I decided to test whether these vegan cakes really are as good as the real thing. So I talked to people on the high street to see what they think. I'm not going to bite it, because I'll yep. just end up with... Um... Mm, that's really nice. It's really good. Really nice. Could you tell that that was a vegan cake with no egg or butter in it? No. There's no egg or butter? No, it's made with soya. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit drier at the top, I would say. Right. Well, that's maybe because it's not got the butter in I could not. Mm-hmm. I definitely could not. No, not at all. It tastes like cake, if 
that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't taste <laughs> like it's anything special. No, it tastes amazing. So having spoken to Linda, who owns this vegan shop here in Lincoln, and having taste tested members of the public on vegan foods, I think it's easy to say that vegan foods can be just as tasty as meat foods, foods that aren't vegan friendly and that maybe going to a supermarket is not the option and doing general fresh cooking with fresh ingredients from scratch is the option for somebody on a vegan diet. So it's Friday. It's the end of the first week. I'm starting to feel a little bit lethargic now. Um, I think not having dairy and meat is a big adjustment to my diet. Very big adjustment and um, kind of starting to take its toll on me a bit. Um, so I'm finding that I'm having to eat a little bit more um, to uh, get get the kind of like energy that I need. But then it's probably less calories in the things I eat so it probably balances that out. So. We'll just see how it goes. We'll see if I've lost weight, put on weight, maintained my weight at the very end of the week on Sunday. It's Saturday and I've just got back from work. Um, I think going to work and taking a packed lunch has been a bit of a challenge. Um, I was struggling to kind of like find something I could eat because normally I'd take a sandwich and that would have kind of like a meat um, meat filling with something like mayonnaise in it. So that's that's a big difference is that I had to find something else to eat. Um, so I had some um, cereal bars, like fruit based cereal bars and um, just like some nuts and some a couple of other kind of like snacky things but enough to make a lunch. I think that's that's the biggest challenge to me. So I've got work again tomorrow, so hopefully I can think of think of something else to have. After I had started my vegan journey, I wondered why other people have chosen to live this way. Unlike me, full-time vegans live this lifestyle 24 seven. I wondered what the reasons for this were and met with some vegans to find out more. So why did you decide to take up this lifestyle? Yeah, for me it was just really um, eating animals and meat. Never, from about four or five, it just didn't sit well with me. So um, I'd always want to go vegetarian kind of thing, but I never really stuck at it. Then once I turned 16, I thought it really didn't sit well with me. I didn't enjoy the thought of eating meat. I only did it for habit and taste. So I thought I'm going to commit to it. I went vegetarian and as soon as I went vegetarian, I sort of started realising that the milk industry and whatnot are exactly the same and it links together very strongly. So I just made that immediate commitment just to go straight vegan. So for me, it was just, I didn't agree with the whole situation of the whole animal industry. Yeah, I think for me it's kind of quite opposite. Um, I turned vegan about a year ago now and it was all from watching, I was a meat eater, like loved eating meat, cheese, milk, whatever. And I watched a film called Vegucated that was about uh, following these three people that uh, try and change their diet to help their health and for the environment and for the animal rights issues. And I was like, well, why not give it a go? Um, so I did, I literally, overnight, I went from being a meat eater to, to not eating any animal products at all. Did you find the transition from meat eater to vegan quite a difficult thing? I personally didn't know because I was so committed to it and for years I'd sort of been building up to it. But so I, as soon as I did it, I just went straight for it. I had no sort of temptations at start, but the big help me was my parents helped me out a lot. I've heard some people had no backing from the parents, so they had to go out and do their own shopping and discover everything where I had my parents who would help me cook. They were as interested in me. So they were helping me stay healthy through that first stage to fully find out everything about it. So yeah, it was a really easy transition. So you said that your parents were quite supportive. In other areas, did you find the transition into veganism 
quite troubled? Did you have any other difficulties? Yeah, I think university is quite a difficult place to be, to be vegan sometimes. Like if you go out for night and then go home and get a takeaway, you kind of your options are chips or nothing. Um, but the other day I had uh, ordered takeout from uh, pizza from Papa John's and they did it without cheese. No problem. It was really nice. So I think you've just got to make a bit more of an effort to like yeah. find the alternatives. So, do you not think that vegetarianism is enough, then? I personally don't at all. Um, I understand why some people would go vegetarian and just be happy with that, because I thought that's how I would, but once I went vegetarian, I started seeing how the dairy industry is pretty much keeps the meat industry sustainable, so when a cow, a milk cow, gives birth, either that's where veal comes from. So the veal industry is straight from the milk industry and then the same with uh, keeping the chicken industry sustainable is by having the egg industry giving birth to either male hens or I've got the terminology wrong but male chickens or female chickens so those male ones will keep the chicken industry alive and those female ones will just be caged up and kept in the egg industry. It's Tuesday night, um, we, me and a few of my friends went to um, Weatherspoons uh, tonight um, to eat and I found that really really hard because I found that a lot of the options that were vegetarian, even if I took out things like mayonnaise, cheese, stuff like that, I thought I couldn't guarantee whether or not that was going to be vegetarian. So the socialised, like going out for a meal, I think with people who eat meat was really, really difficult for me, especially going from somebody who eats meat, you know, being used to being able to choose all those options, being able to eat whatever I wanted at a restaurant was really quite a big change. So I ended up basically just having sides again like I did the first time I went and e ate out and it was just like it was it was just really hard it was just really hard to kind of like keep that self-control as well and then I, I ate an, an onion ring and then it wasn't until later when I thought oh what if they dip that in egg so it's just like normal things that I would normally eat are just cut off so that's quite, it's quite a big change. It's Wednesday. Um, today's been quite good, actually. Um, I've had more time because my big, big deadlines passed. So I've had much more time to think about what I was eating. Um, so I've been able to kind of like. Um, think about it and a lot of the things I've eaten today have been pretty much exactly the same as what I would normally have um, except that they've just got a, a vegan substitute for the meat in it so that, that's that been really good today actually I haven't really felt like I've been vegan today um, even though I have so um, yeah, I'm hoping that now I've got more time, it's going to be much, much better. If these two weeks have taught me anything, it's that major dietary changes, such as becoming vegan from being a meat eater, are not to be entered into lightly. I've spoken to people who have made that change, such as the people who run the Vegetarian and Vegan Society at the university, and they seem to have perfect benefits from it. Personally, for me, it made me feel lethargic and tired, and it was a really, really big challenge. I think community within your dietary change is really important, which I learned from Linda at the Yellow Belly shop at the top of the hill in Lincoln. But I think the most important thing is just having something to believe in in your dietary change. And I think for me, because I don't believe in the ethics behind veganism, that made it much harder.